Our first guest tonight has, has been on this show more times than anyone, including me. She has been on, yes, she is an Emmy winner and a Grammy nominee with a new comedy special called Kathy Griffin, Tired Hooker. It premieres on Bravo <laughs> Tuesday, December 20th. Please say hello to Kathy Griffin. <laughs> for your 30, your historic 32nd appearance on the show. 32 appearances. Mm -hmm. We just passed Regis and Kelly. Good. That's fantastic. <laughs> How I, are you doing? I'm having the best Kwans of my life. Now, are you really? I really am. I really am. <laughs> I'm going to tip it. <laughs> now, do you know what that is? That means the people are such a fan of my alcoholic mother that they are referring to how she tips a box of wine by just yelling, tip it. <laughs> my mother is a national treasure. Yeah, well, I know. Oh, believe me, I know that. One box of wine at a time. <laughs> Do you think, is she watching this right now, or is she be? No, actually, my mom has permanently, accidentally put her television on the Yule Log channel. Oh. I'm not kidding, because she doesn't have a fireplace, and so she thinks TV stopped existing, <laughs> and now all TVs are just magically fireplaces. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. she is tipping it. Yeah, how she's you, tipping it. How, she's tipping have, it. you feel in the holiday spirit? Have they started uh, for you yet? Yeah, absolutely. Here's why. Okay, so last week I went to, you know I do a lot of celebrity events, Jimmy. Yes, you do. I'm out among the people mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> getting material for you. And so <laughs> I went to this uh, breakfast last Wednesday, 9 a.m., and it was some sort of like 100 most powerful women in Hollywood or so. I don't know. I don't care. But the point is... <laughs> No, I mean, it was like an A-list event. They were honoring Jane Fonda, and all these female captains of industry were there, but I had the best seat in the house because I arrived, and at my table was Nancy Grace. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, it gets better? Hi, friend, how are you? Hi, friend. Because you know Nancy Grace, the crime reporter who always talks about the twins? Uh -huh. And I will unleash the lawyers on you, Kathy Griffin. But I, I love her. Okay, so that was as if that wasn't good enough. Next to me... This was her nightmare, but my dream, Kim freaking Kardashian. Oh, wow. Right? Whoever made the seating arrangements had a good sense of humor, I guess. I think it was a strategic gay who made those seating arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gays have never let me down. And putting me, right? Wow, so I can't imagine Kim Kardashian showing up to anything at 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, she did look a little bit like a dirty whore. <laughs> Let me clarify. I meant, let me clarify. I'm sorry. I so should have said, I meant. it off. Yeah, I, I, meant, I didn't mean to say dirty whore. I meant to say a filthy whore. Okay. Because, no, no. I, I was, she, you guys, she was mortified to see that she was seated next to me. She was was she really? Yes, of course she was. <laughs> and, but she really did at nine in the morning. She, I mean, the makeup was insane and she had the fake ponytail. Those Kardashians never met a fake ponytail they didn't love. I mean, they look like the back of a horse. You know, they're like, <laughs> Those are fake ponytails? Some things in Hollywood are fabricated. <laughs> why, would, you, why would you have a fake ponytail? Oh why not just Oh, my God. What's with the new guy? <laughs> wow. Because I don't know, you I don't... want more. Because at 9 in the morning, Kim Kardashian looked like a freaking genie in a bottle. <laughs> but I know with the makeup, it was fantastic. And, um, and then her mom, Kris Jenner, was sitting next to her, who is my idol. She is? Yes. Because I don't, I resent that my mom like raised me and sent me to school and fed me, and I think she should have been more like like a pimp, like more like is what I would have liked. I agree. Prove me, okay. Yes, yes. Prove. Okay. And so yes, so um, uh, at one point I, I will say it is it's a little difficult to carry on conversations with Kim Kardashian. Why? She's super stupid. Um, <laughs> allegedly, I'm not. This is my, only my opinion. <laughs> no, but I... Did you talk to her, though? I tried. I really did. I tried to make her laugh, and I was being very, very funny, uh -huh. I will tell you, and she did not laugh at any of my jokes. Really? Not one. But um, they had, uh, it was, you know, they had Viola Davis was there, and she was, yeah, from The Help, that moved The Help. And so oh, she yeah. was reading, actually, a list of names of young women that had been given scholarships, and Kim leaned in, and she said, literally, she goes, 
reading names is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah, if you're illiterate. <laughs> Her top knot did not move. It was not shaking with laughter. And then it was, it was I mean, she was actually very nice. You've met them. They're all nice. And yeah, so they are. Yeah. She um, leaned in and she said, I have to leave early. And I swear to God, I'm quoting. She goes, they're making me do a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like, it's, I don't know if it was like a Guantanamo Bay hostage situation. <laughs> I didn't know if she was trying to communicate she needed help in some Maybe way. Maybe she was. I, I feel I should have helped her more. You have the you ever signals. been forced, forced to do a photo shoot? Every photo shoot I've ever done has been a forcible situation. They're making you do it. Yes, Seriously. Right. Seriously. Wow, so that's something. That's I loved it. like an oh, early Christmas heaven. gift for you for sure. Thank you, baby Jesus. You were just in Australia. Yes. I did two sold out nights at the Sydney Opera House, which is very That's, fancy. Wow, that is and something else. Yeah, right? it was fancy. Do they get your show over there? Is that how they know you? Yes, over they there? get my life on the D list is there and my specials are there. And oh, by the way, I would recommend that none of the Kardashians watch my next special. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm just, I mean, I hope you guys like it, but I, they probably shouldn't tune in December 20th. But I'm, you guys, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so yeah. I was in Australia and, um, you know, I, uh, like you, I rarely get a day off, but I went in a day early and I went to see um, the Foo Fighters in concert because oh, I'm fun. a big Foo Fighters fan. I nice. love them. <laughs> You know, performed at a stadium of 40,000 people and stuff. And so I think you should know that after the concert, lead singer Dave Grohl um, ended up coming to my hotel room and gossiping like a girl till 2 30 in the morning. Is that right? So you should know that's what your badass rock stars do. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, that so is it shocking. It was fun. It was fun. We're Did pals. he share any gossip that was of, course, of interest of, to you? Oh, you straights are so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> you straights with your I don't care about the housewives BS. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so he came to my room and we were gossiping and, you know, he's so straight and I, I speak fluent gay. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fluently. Fluently. And, and I will say he's so straight that there was a little language barrier for a few minutes. I kind of felt like he was my foreign exchange student. But um, he said that uh, being in Australia where they worship Kylie Minogue and which she's fantastic but he was like i don't get it and wouldn't it be funny if i sang that song can't get you out of my head so i bet him a hundred bucks i said if tomorrow night to your forty thousand fans i dare you to uh sing the kylie minogue song and he was like we're the food fighters we don't do kylie minogue and i said a hundred bucks and he didn't do it he didn't do it so i'm calling him a <laughs> <laughs> and he owes me a hundred dollars. U.S. dollars. A hundred U.S. dollars, That's my right. friend. We're yes. going to take a quick break here. Kathy Griffin has a special called Kathy Griffin Tired Hooker. It premieres December 20th on the Broadway Network. We'll be right back with Kathy. Every year, you you help host New Year's for CNN, New with Year's Anderson Eve. With Anderson Cooper, CNN, this with New Anderson. Year's Eve. That's right. And I am, I'm continually amazed because the first year you were on, you I cursed. I got fired. And you got fired. Every year I get fired. And then you, you come back every single year. Is that because yeah. Anderson insists on having you there, or what I happens? I think it's his fault. I, yeah, because... I mean, I mean, a favor he does for me. <laughs> yeah, I think the executives hate me and fire me, and then I think at the 11th hour, he sort of saves the day. I'm like his Haitian refugee at this point. <laughs> He's got to just save me, just like all the other people he saves on TV. We've got some photographs, and tell us uh, what's going on. And Well, okay. this one is uh, Anderson tying or removing? <laughs> He's... Uh, I'm going to tell the real story about what happened when I went to stay with his house in Long Island because he has this sort of cute story like we're buds. I actually tortured him and I was naked most of the time. So that's him once again like trying running? to get me to put my bathing suit top. Like he would say things like, can you just put the top on? Like what about just the top for a little while? And I'd go, woo, bottomless party. <laughs> Did you really do that at his house? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a clothing. I thought it was like a nudist colony. <laughs> you did. Yeah. What would lead you I'm his most that. embarrassing friend. Like he's he we're friends, but he tries not to tell people. Uh, yeah, so well, that's why I'm here to tell he, you. And yet we're seeing these photographs, yeah. and he continually brings. And you then he says, "Please don't take pictures." And I say, "I'm not going to take pictures, Does Anderson. Ever and take, show them on Jimmy Kimmel." <laughs> Does he ever say to you, "Listen, yes. this is 
this I would rather you didn't work into the hour. Yes. Are there any? And do you? I tr I tr no. <laughs> I, he, yeah, he, you mean like, I, well, he says usually on New Year's he'll say things like, um, you know, I've beaten down CNN so much that they don't even try to look at my material anymore. Like, like last year they honestly said, if you could just not say <laughs> <laughs> Three people in the control room just had a heart attack. <laughs> I meant yeah. to say <laughs> okay. That's why That's say better. Yes. That is better. But I, no, I, 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 yeah, I'll be telling a lot of revealing things. I actually brought a list of things that, you know, my, my first goal is to get Anderson fired. That's so that's great. like like literally before midnight, just somebody from CNN says, that's it, buddy, you're out. So okay. whatever I can do. Um, also, this year, I'd like to uh, whip out a live titty. <laughs> like a, <laughs> Grace had that wardrobe malfunction on Dancing with the Stars, right. and so I think I should, you know, I have real boobs, and I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> so, yeah, so tonight when I go to sleep, my boobs are going to be under my armpits where they belong. <laughs> they really are. So if I could just whip one out on CNN and Why prove not? to the world that they still exist. All right, okay. so that's one goal. Um, let's see. I'm going to probably drunk dial Wolf Blitzer. Good, that would be great. That's going to be a situation room. Will you be drinking during the broadcast? I actually don't drink, but I'm going to give Anderson what's called a rohypnol. <laughs> it's more commonly known as a roofie, uh, uh, yeah. so he's not going to remember anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing Wolf will remember it. What else? Wolf always remembers. There's nothing. <laughs> yes. um, and then, oh, I will. Okay, this is true. This is this is a little vicious, even for me, but it's true. Um, I'm going to hog tie Ryan Seacrest and hide him hide him in a can of peanut brittle. Look, I. <laughs> no, but last year what happened was because you know. <laughs> like one of those snakes that jumps out. Yes, yeah. because Ryan Seacrest, by the way, is not unlike a snake in a can. The way he has just <laughs> foisted those Kardashians on us, he basically owns the world at this point. Uh -huh. He must be stopped. However, um, every year, you know, Times Square. It's like the Carson Daly broadcast and the MTV broadcast and then Ryan Seacrest in his weird booth with Dick Clark and um, <laughs> booth of safety. And so last year, I, you know, there's a there's an NYPD officer that Anderson kind of acts like is his security person, but it's clearly Anderson's security person against me. Against like, you? It's, it, it's his protection against me. Okay. Not the 500,000 fans there at Times Square. Uh -huh. But last year I did say to the cop as a joke, you know, I'm safe with anybody, but seriously, keep Ryan Seacrest away from me because that guy's trying to kill me. And the cop said, I can't find him, Kath. He's too short. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! <laughs> to protect and serve. Well, this sounds like it's going to be a heck of a way to kick in, to I know. ring in the new year, huh? Yeah, I also like to heckle and throw things. Like one year I just threw things at the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> because I get jealous because the other broadcasts have like artists and they actually have a budget. And CNN that. is truly just Anderson and I freezing our balls off wow. on a riser. Watch Kathy Griffin running wild and ruining broadcasts on various other networks on CNN on New Year's Eve. And Kathy Griffin tired hooker December 20th on Bravo. Kathy Griffin, everybody.